Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Min Hao Cui. I'm a second year PhD student from University of Massachusetts Amherst under the supervision of Jie Xiong. I'm presenting our work Sniffing with Polite Communication Through Walls. This is a joint work with Yu Da and Jie from UMass and Qing from TU Delft. First, let's get a general picture of our project. As we all know, 5G is now being deployed all over the world, and the research on next-generation network has already started. Visible light communication is considered as one promising technique for 6G network. So the first question is, why visible light communication is promising? Visible light communication has several unique advantages. The first advantage is that compared with the traditional radio frequency signal, visible light signal occupies a huge bandwidth, more than thousands of times larger than the radio frequency band used by Wi-Fi and 5G. Therefore, VLC has the potential to achieve a very high throughput. Second, since visible light frequencies are far away from RF frequencies, and so visible light communication does not interfere existing RF communications. Last but not least, VLC is considered to be secure because visible light signals can be easily confined within physical boundaries such as walls. Let's further talk about the security feature of VLC. Most RF signals such as Wi-Fi could penetrate through walls. This is beneficial in increasing transmission range. However, this is a double-edged sword. The attacker could capture the signal even when the attacker is blocked by walls. On the other hand, for VLC, the visible light could not penetrate through walls. Therefore, the attacker cannot sniff VLC data if the attacker is physically located outside of space, as shown in the right figure. So, VLC is widely considered as a secure scheme. However, in this paper, we ask this question. Is VLC really as secure as people thought? Surprisingly, the answer is big no. For the first time, we found that in VLC transmissions, the transmitter not only emits out visible light signals, but also leaks out side channel signals, an EM signal which can be captured to sniff the VLC transmission. What makes it more interesting is that this side channel signal is a low frequency EM signal, which cannot be blocked by walls. Therefore, even an attacker is blocked by walls, the VLC data can still be leaked out through the side channel as illustrated in the figure. Now, let me explain why there exists such signal leakage with VLC. The main reason is the intensity modulation scheme widely adopted by VLC systems. Due to the high frequency and incoherent nature of light signal for commercial LEDs, VLC could not simply employ the phase-based modulation. In intensity modulation, VLC transmitter transmits 0 and 1 by turning off on the LED as shown in the figure. Let me use a simple example to illustrate the process. The bottom diagram is the current change in the power line during the process. We could observe that the LED is turned on off. The current in the power line is actually changing correspondingly. Remember, this changing current is the key of the leaked signal. Let's start from the well-known Maxwell equation. Maxwell equation tells us that a changing current will induce a changing magnetic field as shown in the figure. And the changing magnetic field will further induce an electromotive force. From the electromotive force, we could infer how the current changes. With the information how the current changes in the VLC transmitter device, we could infer the data transmitted in the VLC signal. Well, this signal cannot penetrate through the wall. This electromotive force can be captured behind the walls. Sounds exciting, right? Although the idea seems very promising, several challenges need to be addressed before the idea can be turned into a functional system. First, which antenna should we use to capture leaked signals? There are many types of antennas. According to our measurements, the frequency of the leaked signal is low located in the range from 1 to 60 MHz for commercial LEDs. For such a low frequency to receive the signal several meters away is actually near-field communication, which is very different from traditional far-field communication such as Wi-Fi. So, 
We choose a coil antenna for the reception of the leaked signals in our system, not LED, whereas charging in our smartphone is also near field and a similar coil design is adopted. Another challenge is that the frequency of the leaked signal is unknown. Compared with the traditional RF transmissions, such as Wi-Fi and RFID signals, which have known carrier frequencies, the frequency of the leaked signal is unknown. The reason is that the frequency of the leaked signal depends on the on-off frequency of the LED. The on-off frequency can vary significantly for different VLC systems, and even for the same system transmitting at different data rates. Therefore, the frequency of the leaked signal is unknown. The last challenge is that how to decode data with a half of the signals. Why do we only have half of the leaked signals? In an ideal scenario, the current change in the transmitter is a perfect square. The current jumps directly from zero to the maximum value in zero seconds. And with an infinitely large current changing rate, the sniffed signal is a pulse. However, in reality, it takes tens of nanoseconds for the current to change from low to high or high to low. Further, due to the intrinsic hardware limit, the current change speeds are very different when the current changes from low to high and changes from high to low. Usually, one is faster and the other is much slower. According to Maxwell equations, the faster current change will induce a stronger signal and the slower current change will induce a weaker signal. Thus, at the receiver side, not all the signal peaks can be detected. As shown in the figure, we assume the current change from high to low is slower. We can see that the signal peak caused by the falling edge current change is small and could be undetected. It is challenging to decode data with just half signals. To address the above three challenges, a fundamental step is to model the VLC side channel to fully understand the underlying mechanism. Now, we present the RF side channel model and study the parameters at both transmitter and receiver sides affecting the sniffed signal. We use AR to denote the amplitude of the sniffed signal. Intuitively, a larger current in the power line should lead to a larger sniffed signal. At the receiver side, a larger coil should also lead to a larger sniffed signal. Of course, the EM signal decays with increasing distance. After we dig deeper, we found quite a few parameters affecting the sniffed signal, including the maximum current, the power line length, the current changing rate, the coil diameter, the number of coil turns, and distance between transceivers. We validate the effect of these parameters with experiments. We show the validation result of two parameters here, and you can see the measured values match the model we propose very well. The detailed results can be found in our paper. Next, I will talk about another interesting phenomenon of the side RF channel. Ideally, the amplitude of the sniffed signal will increase linearly with the increase of the current changing rate. However, due to resonant effect, we see a clear signal amplitude peak. This peak shows up when the intrinsic resonant frequency of the coil matches the signal frequency. Such phenomenon provides us the opportunity to utilize the resonant effect to further increase the amplitude of the sniffed signal. Now, let me introduce our sniffer design. As discussed in the last slide, we could increase the signal amplitude by matching the coil's resonant frequency to the signal frequency. Since we could not control the frequency of the leaked signal, we change the resonant frequency of the coil to achieve this match. So, how to change the resonant frequency of the coil? As shown in the middle figure, the resonant frequency changes with the number of the coil turns. So, we propose to match frequency by tuning the number of coil turns. After frequency matching, we can get a much stronger sniffed signals. The last challenge is that how to decode data with a half of the signals. Ideally, both peaks could be detected. In reality, only one peak could be detected. As shown in the example, only the rising edge peak could be detected. To address this challenge, we design a novel decoding scheme. 
based on the unique feature of VLC moderation and coding method, which are designed to avoid the flickering issue. We skip the detail here, and please refer to our paper if you are interested. Now, I continue to present the implementation of our sniffer. The receiver coil is made by ourselves using copper. The coil has a diameter of 7.8 cm. We use the linears LTC2208 to sample data and the linears DC718 to collect and transmit data to the laptop for processing. After all, we use a ThinkPad X1 Carbon laptop to perform signal processing and decoding. Now, let's play with our system. The experiment setup is shown here. The transmitter uses the Bingo Bone Black as the controller to drive the front end LED for data transmission. The receiver is our design sniffer. We conduct experiments with nine different LEDs with the parameters as presented in the table. Here we define a new metric, sniffing distance, to evaluate the sniffing performance. The sniffing distance is defined as the maximum distance we can receive the data at a targeted low bit error rate, so all the data can be successfully decoded. For nine different LEDs, we can achieve sniffing distance ranges from 3.1 meters to 8.2 meters, which are comparable to the state-of-art VLC transmission distances. Now, we zoom in to see the more detailed bit error rate result with respect to the transmitter sniffer distance. We take LED6 as an example. We could see that as expected, the bit error rate increases with the distance increases. When the distance increases to 10 meters, the bit error rate reaches near to 2%. Now, let me show you more exciting results. We use the design sniffer to capture the VLC data when the sniffer is blocked by a non-transparent wall. To make it challenging, all the walls are made of concrete. We could see that even blocked by a 60 cm concrete wall, our system could still sniff the data at 2.9 meters away. We also evaluate more scenarios with two walls and when the transmitter and the sniffer are located at different floors, for both scenarios, our sniffer works well. Now, let me show you the most exciting experiment. We replace the coil with other commonly seen items in our daily lives. For example, we wind an earphone around a cardboard tube and also a human arm to see if the whale's data can still be sniffed. The results are exciting. Although the performance is not as good as the coil, they could still sniff the leaked signals. We also conducted another experiment by replacing the coil with a wireless charger coil of the smartphone. It also worked well. This experiment demonstrated the possibility of using the smartphone as a receiver for sniffing without a need of adding any extra hardware components. We further tested the sniffer in different environments, including a student apartment and outdoor. We could see that the results do not change much in different environments, and slightly better performance is achieved in the outdoor. We believe this is because there are more interference in the lab environment. At the end of this presentation, I would like to present some possible defenses for the proposed sniffing attack. The first solution is to shorten the length of the power line. Since, as the model tells us, that the shorter the power line, the smaller amplitude of the signals. However, shorter power line will bring other problems such as magnetic coupling and heat dissipation. The second solution is to use a Faraday cage to shell the RF leakage. To not affect illumination and communication functions, we need to use transparent material to build the Faraday cage. The last method is to design a new modulation scheme for VLC to avoid fast current change in the power line to weaken the signals. For future work, we will study the proposed side channel to sniff VLC transmission based on other modulation schemes, such as color shift keying. 
Another very interesting direction we want to study is to sniff a massive amount of VLC transmitters simultaneously. Last, the current VLC data rate is still low. In the future, high throughput VLC can be something interesting to sniff, as the on-off rate is much higher and the frequency of the leak signal will also be higher. With all that, let me conclude this work. In this work, we identified a novel and fundamental physical security flaw of VLC. We successfully modeled the VLC side channel. Based on the model, we designed and implemented a chip sniffer. Furthermore, with the comprehensive experiments, we showed our sniffer can sniff VLC through walls and the different environments. That's all. Thank you for listening.